Amen. I want to welcome you again this morning to Tri-State Baptist Temple. Take your hymn book. Turn to hymn number 268. Hymn 268. Let's stand together. We'll see. church this morning and uh, we're going to hear a great message from the word of God today so uh, we're looking forward to a great time together. We want to have a word of prayer and just ask the Lord to bless our time uh, together here this morning. Brother Wallace, will you pray for us please? as we listen to our choir. Thank you. 
choir is going to come down. We invite you to stand one more time this morning. We'll greet one another today. Amen. Well, you can find your seat uh, again this morning. We do uh, want to welcome you again. We're excited you're here, and we're looking forward to uh, today and just being able to uh, hear from our pastor as he preaches for us today and, and just excited about all the Lord has in store for us. We do want to make some announcements and remind you about some of the things that are going on in the life of our church and some things that we want you to be aware of. Uh, our Hallelujah Festival is one thing that we want to make mention of, and uh, we're excited about it. The date uh, has changed for that. I know Pastor will speak more about that in a moment, but uh, the date now for the Hallelujah Festival will be October the 24th on a Thursday. We originally had it scheduled for Tuesday, uh, but we had to make a change, and so the Hallelujah Festival will be Thursday, October the 24th, uh, and we're excited about it. We need your help with our Hallelujah Festival. Uh, we need candy, soft candy, uh, that we use as prizes for all the games. We always have a soup and chili supper, and we ask our church family just to uh, bring in a pot of soup or chili uh, for that night as well, and then there's other things that uh, we need, and I think Pastor is going to speak more about uh, the Hallelujah Festival as well in just a moment and uh, let you know some more about what we're doing, but we want to let you know uh, that the date changed, and we want you to be praying, and we're hoping that everyone in our fa church family can be a part of our Hallelujah Festival this year, and then uh, don't forget that if you're planning on or, or interested in uh, our next missions trip that will happen next summer. Uh, our next meeting is tonight after the evening service, and so uh, we want you to stay and be a part of that meeting uh, at, after the evening service tonight, so don't miss out on that. Our next men's breakfast is this coming Saturday at 830. We want all of our men to come and be a part of that as well. It's a great time uh, together. We enjoy uh, just eating a good breakfast together and spending some time in God's Word. Uh, Pastor has a devotional book that he'll uh, give us as well, and uh, so it's a good time so we want to encourage our men to be a part of our men's breakfast this coming Saturday at 8:30. Uh, our ladies retreat don't forget about that that's uh, November the 15th and the 16th you can register for that if you have questions about it please uh, ask Miss Angie and she can help you with that 
and we're looking forward to it. Our missions uh, conference is going to be, our missions meeting is going to be November the 1st through the 3rd this year, and we're excited about that as well. Looking forward to that. I know we've got some great uh, people that are going to come and be with us uh, on, during that meeting, uh, some missionaries, and then our speaker is going to be a great uh, great weekend. So we want to encourage you to be praying for our missions uh, conference, our missions meeting, November the 1st through the 3rd. In preparation for that meeting, I know a uh, pastor is uh, teaching in our, our Building with the Bible hour on the power of giving. And the lesson this morning was fantastic. And uh, just thinking about uh, what Christ has given us and how we need to share uh, that with others. And so uh, it was a great, uh, great lesson this morning. If you weren't here this morning for the Building with the Bible hour, we want to encourage you to come back next week at the 930 hour and be a part of these classes that Pastor Tim is teaching. And, and uh, they'll be a blessing to you. They're going to be a help to you. And uh, if you missed today, uh, he can give you uh, the notes. I know he'd be glad to do that. And you, know, you can get caught up, and we hope you'll come. This is for our church family. This is for everyone in our church family to come, and especially as we're looking towards our missions meeting, uh, I want to encourage all of our church family to be in the Building with the Bible Hour, be in these lessons with Pastor Tim on the power of giving, and it'll be a help to you in your life. And so don't miss out on that as well. Our choir is going to practice at 515 tonight, so we encourage you to be here, be a part of our uh, our choir practice. If you've not uh, been a part of it in the past, we want to encourage you to come and uh, be a part of our choir and, and come practice with us at 515 tonight. And then, uh, this is always a shock when we begin announcing this, but next Sunday we'll begin practice for our kids' Christmas program. So it's always shocking when we ha have the first, uh, first practice, but I want to encourage all of our families to have uh, children. Uh, what's the four-year-old or below that what is it young children elementary and down and uh, uh to come and be a part of that on sunday nights we want you to come we'll have a great christmas program again this year we're going to start practicing next sunday so i hope you'll have your kids involved in that and be a part of the christmas program and uh, then the last thing we want to let you know about is October is Pastor Appreciation Month. That's something that's just uh, recognized in our country amongst churches all across the country. And we, uh, we want to uh, remember how wonderful our pastor is as well. And so I hope you'll, uh, you'll uh, take this month and, and just uh, uh, really think uh, more often maybe than you normally do about how wonderful the Lord has been to us to give us a great pastor. And I hope you'll show him how much you appreciate him. We're going to have a special uh, uh, pastor appreciation lunch uh, next Sunday after the morning service. And so we are uh, uh, looking forward to that. We want you to come next Sunday, stay after the service, and uh, just enjoy some time uh, with our pastor, fellowship with him. We encourage you to bring him a card or, and those kind of things and just to show him how much you appreciate him. But uh, we're excited about these things and looking forward to all that we've got going on here at our church. But this time, we'll ask our men to come. We'll take up our tithes offering, our faith promise missions offering this morning. Hey, man, let's pray together again this morning. Amen.
Well, good morning. It's a joy to see you here. Appreciate the choir doing a good job, our orchestra, and uh, for you being here in church on the first Sunday morning in October. And uh, it was good to get up and come out uh, and walk through the showers of blessing today, wasn't it? And uh, hopefully we'll have them for a couple days, and uh, it'll, it'll help us a little bit, but we are thankful for it, and we're glad you're here today. And uh, we're just excited about uh, all the Lord is doing right now. I had a great weekend last uh, Sunday. Our, our homecoming was just a good day. And uh, we're excited about moving into October now. And, and uh, as we move into fall, we have a lot of important, exciting opportunities, events, and meetings that are on our calendar coming up pretty quickly. And uh, we want you to be sure to be involved in everything you can and uh, just make the most of all the opportunities that are available for you. Uh, to just uh, kind of plug in and, and make an investment in, uh, in your time and, uh, and your treasures and talents and, and impact our community and, and even around the world. Uh, Evan mentioned some of the things that are coming up, and we'll talk a little bit more about those things, but uh, we, uh, we are uh, going to move the date of our Hallelujah Festival. Uh, we always do it the, about the third Tuesday of October. Uh, we're moving that to Thursday night, so just two days. Uh, the 22nd to the 24th, and uh, same time, 6.30 to 8, and uh, we need all of your help for that. Uh, that's just a great night for us. We, uh, we just kind of open up the doors, and uh, we try to invite the community to come in, and we have just sort of a fall festival type event, and uh, we have some little games and uh, hayride and uh, flatables and free hot dog dinners to all the children. And uh, it's just a great night for us. Evan mentioned the soup and chili supper. We ask our church families who are going to come to help just to bring a pot of soup or chili. And uh, we kind of share those together for the meal that night. Uh, but it's a good, a good event. We'll have two or 300 people come through uh, that night. And it gives us an opportunity to, to contact and meet families and follow up on families. And so it's a good investment for us to make as a church into our community but we need your help with that. We need folks who can operate a game and help in the kitchen and just uh, be here to be a part of whatever's going on and, and just to give all our guests and visitors a welcome and a helping hand. Uh, we're going to meet for just one moment today right here, right over here in this uh, wing. If you are interested in helping us, uh, we would like to know that. And then we need your help uh, as well. Uh, and uh, we want to ask your help on some things, uh, but, but please stay after for just a minute. Some of you signed up uh, back in January during Vision Month uh, to, to help in the Hallelujah Festival. Uh, if your name's on that list, we're just assuming you're going to be there, and if you can't for some reason because we've moved the date or something, uh, we hope you'll just scratch your name off so we're not looking at you on there and, and, and looking for you being there. Uh, but we need your help. And uh, one of the things everybody can do is start bringing in soft candy, uh, bags of soft candy, because we give that out. All the little games that the kids play, we give them candy, whether they win or not, knock over the things or not, whatever. We just uh, we give them the candy anyway, and, and we need as much of it as you can bring. And it's not too early to start, because this will be on us here quickly. And so you can just bring that in each time you come to church. We'll pile it up and we'll have it for that night. Uh, but please stay for just a minute. We won't be here more than five minutes or so after the morning service. I just want to touch base and talk to you just a minute. And many of you maybe have not been a part of it before or uh, you're, you know, maybe unsure about what and how you could be helpful. Uh, but we want you to know that. So that's an important thing. Now, the reason we moved it to Thursday night is because we have the opportunity to host a teen rally here at our ministry center that has the, has the possibility of impacting uh, hundreds of young people. And uh, I had mentioned before, we're, we're working together with a gentleman. His name is Bob Holmes, and he's an evangelist. Uh, he's a preacher, uh, independent, fundamental preacher, just like we are. And he has a unique ministry of going into public schools all across America and uh, he has a great presentation that he gives on, uh, on, on the dangers and temptations that young people face today. And that's an ever-evolving, ever-changing thing. Today, it's suicide is a high level, uh, bullying, uh, social bullying through social media platforms, uh, vaping, 
Uh, there's all kinds of different things Satan comes at our young people with today to try to get them off track. And he goes in and gives a very good public school assembly demonstration uh, and, and speech about these things to encourage young people. And, and the thing that is his hook is he's a volleyball player, uh, but he's a one-man team volleyball player. So he plays against six people on the other side. It could be the school's volleyball team. It could be the football team, any group of athletes, and he wins. He wins. He, he's played professional football teams, the Redskins. Uh, he's played professional basketball teams. They're athletes, and he's beat them by himself, one man against six. It's amazing to see that. And, uh, of course, that's interesting to see that. The kids like that. But he has a great message. But because it's in a public school, he can only go so far. Uh, they won't allow him just to share the gospel like, like, uh, like we would want for him to be able to do. But he will be there at the South Point Middle School. And the whole middle school and high school will have an assembly Tuesday afternoon, October 22nd. Bob's going to be there. He's going to give him his, uh, his uh, thing. But then he's going to invite the children out that night to a rally, and it's going to be in our ministry center. And the reason it's going to be here is, well, we're the only local church in the community that has a ministry center like that, uh, that, that is available for him, that's an independent church like, like he is. Um, and our school system won't allow us to use their gym. I met with the principal uh, Tuesday, uh, Monday morning, went to his office and so, sat down with him and spoke to him about this, and we tried to work through all this, and he took it to his superintendent, and it got bounced around, and it got vetoed. They wouldn't let us in, wouldn't even let us in an elementary school. Uh, we, weren't, we weren't allowed to, to use the facilities. Uh, so, so we're going to do it right here, and uh, we're close to the school. And uh, we're going to invite children back, young people back that night where Bob will be able to share the gospel with them. Uh, uh, he just did this in, in uh, Wayne County, Wayne County Public Schools. They had over 300 young people come back out for the rally that night. He did it in the school, invited kids back. 300 of them came back. Over 100 of them made a profession of faith in Christ when they heard the gospel. So this is a great opportunity for us to make a difference here so that's why we moved our Hallelujah Festival a couple nights, and that won't hurt us at all. But we can still use your help on Tuesday night because we're going to have possibly hundreds of people in the ministry center. Uh, we are going to just need help setting it up, helping people find seats if they need to go to the restroom, just kind of being there, being a presence to welcome people and help people. Uh, we're going to, we, brother Bob likes to promise them pizza. Uh, if you come back, you're going to come to the rally. We'll give you a piece of pizza, a couple pieces of pizza. And so we want to provide that for this event. And uh, we need people at the end of the meeting. He, he does that at the end of the meeting. So as the, as, the, as the people leave, they get a couple pieces of pizza to go, and they can go on their way with that. But we're going to need people who can help us distribute that from our church family. Uh, Ashley, mother-in-law, uh, has the Barbersville Giovanni's, and she has offered to give us a 15-inch pizza for five bucks, five dollars. That's a pretty good buy. Uh, I know Little Caesars does five dollars, but they're not Giovanni's, and they're not as big as a 15-inch pizza. So we can feed a lot more people out of one of those. And Ashley's even volunteered to bring them uh, as she works up that way. She's going to bring them that night with her. Uh, but we're looking at probably 25 pizzas at five dollars a piece. If you want to help then buy a pizza. Uh, you can take an offering envelope, market pizza, and you can buy two or three or however many you want to buy. You know, for five, for, for 25 bucks, you can buy five, and we're going to want about 25 altogether. Uh, so you can really help in that way. And uh, so it's going to be a big night. Be praying for that night that we'll see some young people trust Christ. And so, uh, so it'll be a good evening for us. And uh, we're looking forward to that. And then... Uh, of course, the first weekend in November is our mission, missionary meeting. That's one of the important meetings that we have all year because through that meeting, we, uh, we open up our hearts and our heart and mind to the will of the Lord concerning giving for missions, missionaries, supporting missionaries,
helping them go where God has called them to take the gospel to the people who have never heard it. And, uh, and we want to grow in our missionary work, in our giving for missions and supporting missionaries. We want to be able to give so more can go. You know, there's never been less time in human history to reach the lost than now because we believe Jesus Christ can come at any time. He could come at any moment. There's never been less time to reach the world, but there's never been a time when there's more people alive on planet Earth at any one time than there is now. And so what we do for the Lord, we must do it now. And so this upcoming year uh, is an important year. Uh, there's an emphasis, a priority on getting the gospel to lost people. And so uh, we can do that by giving, the power of giving. If you give the gospel to a lost person who receives it and is saved, it's not just that they're made comfortable or, or healthy or well physically for a short time, you've ensured eternal, eternal salvation for their soul. That's what the power of giving the gospel does. And so we want to give the gospel. So I hope you'll be in our Building with the Bible hour. I want to share some thoughts about that with you as we lead up to November. And then that's the theme of our November missionary meeting, the power of giving. And I hope everyone will be a part of it because you have the power to make a difference in the lives of others. Uh, through giving. And so we hope that you will. And uh, we're looking forward to it. I hope you'll be prayer about a couple things for us. Uh, and one of those is our shut-ins and sick. We've got some folks that are under the weather, not well. Diane Eplin, don't forget Diane. She's not doing well at all. And then pray for my mom. You know that she had to have surgery again on her eye. That's the third surgery to reattach her retina. Same eye, three surgeries. Plus, she had cataract surgery in between all that. Uh, this time, uh, they did it like they had not done it before. They put a band around her entire eye, the outside of her eyeball. They put a band around that thing. And, uh, and this procedure, the doctor told her, it's going to have a better likelihood of, of, of helping you, but it's going to be the most painful surgery that you've had. You're going to be in a lot of pain. And, uh, and so... Uh, so Thursday, after she had had the surgery, she got ill to her stomach and threw up multiple times that day. And uh, you know it's stressful just to be sick, but then to have that eye uh, that way. Uh, so she woke up yesterday morning, her eye was full of blood, uh, swollen, uh, black and blue. So she was alarmed that maybe she had undone all that surgery through being ill and uh, they, uh, dad took her up to that place in Charleston where she has the surgery. They looked at it, said that's normal for this surgery for you to look the way you do, but it wasn't good for you to be ill. Uh, but she meets with the surgeon in the morning to kind of give her a full checkup. So just pray that if it be the Lord's will, that this is all good and it will continue on in healing. Uh, and we have others as well. Uh, don't forget, remember folks in prayer. And then uh, I hope you'll pray for our missionary, Will Lyon, and the people that he ministers to there in Ecuador. And uh, I appreciate Drew kind of keeping me up to date on some of these as well. But uh, you'll remember Will was supposed to be with us this coming Sunday morning. And he had one of his uh, uh, just uh, uh, most precious men in his ministry die through the injuries he sustained from falling off a roof. And so he felt like he couldn't come home. He needs to be there with the people to help them through this time. Well, also, there's developing in their community an up, uh, a, a, a social uproar because the government has changed the policy on uh, propane, purchasing propane. And uh, they've kind of uh, levied a tax on it that's like tripled the cost of a tank of propane uh, and the people live on that. I mean, they, they, they use it for everything, for cooking, to heat their water. They, they don't have utilities like we have. They live in the mountains and the regions that are uh, not uh, like we have. And so they depend upon that for life. And uh, it's just created an uproar. Uh, the citizens are in the streets. Uh, in the little village we are in, if you that went with me to Peru, remember when we came into that little village, we came down to an intersection, and there was kind of a big welcome sign or something there uh, for the community. Then we turned left and went up the hill, 
and it was kind of a real bumpy, rocky road, and it was divided for a little ways, and then it came back together, and we went off the hill where the church and where uh, we'll live. At that very intersection, the community has gathered together for, a long, for, for several days, and they've been burning tires and protesting the government and this, this tax on the propane, and, and it's become violent toward the police and the local officials. But because of uh, the way they are uh, together as a tribe and a village, every citizen is required to spend some time on protest at that intersection. And so uh, if you remember, some of our families uh, stayed, uh, I know that the Griffins stayed with Isabella and Luis, is that? The new church people that hosted us. Uh, you remember uh, that family. Uh, he was the president of that, of that little, it was, and his sister, right, was the one that we used her house. Uh, he uh, is a part of all of that, see, and uh, he's the leader. And, and so he's kind of in between all this. And, uh, and so they were requiring their people to go and stand at protest. And it's dangerous to them. And so it's just a volatile situation. And Will's in the middle of all that. They called him today, contacted him, say, don't leave the house, stay in. They're stopping cars. They're, you know, there are a lot of up, uh, uproar. So just remember that whole situation there. And we've been right where that's all happening. So. I uh, just pray that uh, that will all clear up and everybody will be safe. But we're glad you're here. Thank you for coming and being a part of today. I hope you take your Bible this morning with me and turn to the Old Testament book of Psalms. Uh, Psalm 19 is where I want you to look at. And I'm going to read some scripture there. And uh, we've been uh, mentioning for a little while that today we're going to begin a series of sermons that we're going to be preaching on Sunday mornings that we've entitled uh, getting a grip on the true Christian life. And that's a phrase you're going to be familiar with from me because I often talk about getting a grip on the Christian life. And uh, we liken the Christian life and, and getting a grip on it to like gripping something in your hand. And I've given you illustrations many times and probably none of them very good, but uh, if you're trying to hang on to something, uh, maybe as a child you were on the monkey bars, you know, and you you were climbed up the steps and grabbed that bar and, and you swung off those monkey bars and you're holding on. And uh, uh, if some, if some uh, ornery boy, if you were a girl trying to crawl across those monkey bars and some ornery boy got up on top and started prying your fingers off one at a time, boys wouldn't do that, would they? But uh, yeah, probably they would. And, uh, and the, 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 more, the, the less fingers you got, the less grip you have until eventually you're going to you're going to fall you're going to you're going to you're going to let go and uh, there are five simple things that if we are sure they are a part of our life daily as a born again believer they help us get a grip on what the true christian life really is and uh, and we're going to preach about those because I've talked about them I've given them I've listed them I've shared them, but I've never preached through them all, and I want to do that. I believe we need to do that uh, just to remind ourselves about them. So this morning, we're going to look at the first one, getting a grip on God's Word, getting a grip on God's Word. And uh, you'll notice up here as well that uh, by our, uh, our families of faith sign, there's a little literature rack, and uh, that literature, there's several booklets and pamphlets and things there. All of these things have to do with the Word of God. Uh, there are some uh, there's some guides there for you to read the Bible through uh, a schedule. There's a guide there for you to read the Bible to your children by its great stories. Uh, there's a booklet there on reading the book of Proverbs one day a week uh, every month, uh, the corresponding day of the month with the chapter of the book. Uh, there's all kinds of Bible helps here. And we're talking about the Word of God today and its importance in getting a grip on the Christian life. So I hope that after the service is over, you come up to the festival meeting and grab some of that literature and uh, you can begin to utilize it and put into practice, be doers of the Word uh, as, uh, as, we, as we know that we must be. But Psalm 19, notice verse 11 and uh, verse 11. Down, or verse 7 down to verse number 11, and uh, I'll read it for you. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. 
The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, and sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. And we'll stop right there, but uh, let's look at getting a grip on God's Word. Lord, we thank you today for your goodness and grace to us. We thank you for the opportunity we have to come out and be here. We thank you, Lord, for uh, a good rainy morning. And uh, Lord, we just pray that, uh, Lord, today as we uh, assemble together as a people, that Lord will just allow the blessings of uh, what you want to give to us by your word and through the fellowship that we have, through the singing, the music, everything, Lord, today, uh, just to have an impact in our heart. I encourage those today who are discouraged. And Lord, sometimes we know that uh, there are things that, Lord, uh, are difficult and that have discouraged us or disappointed us. Uh, sometimes, Lord, we're like the children of Israel. We, uh, we tend to, uh, to look at the cup half empty instead of half full. We tend to look at the things that went wrong rather than the things that God uh, have gone right and that we've been blessed by. And so just encourage people today to help us, Lord, today, uh, just to, uh, God, uh, fill our heart and mind with all the wonderful blessings that you have given to us. And uh, Lord, we pray for those who can't be here today, and we just encourage you, uh, Lord, just to uh, undertake for them. And uh, Lord, we just uh, ask that they would know your presence. And uh, Lord, we pray that, God, uh, if it please you, you would just uh, touch and give healing and, and give clarity of heart and mind and give uh, doctors and those treating folks uh, wisdom and direction, and Lord, uh, just help people to uh, be healthy and whole so that they can live for you and serve you like they want to. Give grace and strength to those that are going through trials. And uh, Lord, we pray today for our missionary, Brother Will, and his family that are in Ecuador, those families that we met, Lord, that were so kind and showed the love of Christ to us that are a part of that community. We pray your safety on them, hedge them in, keep them safe. And uh, Lord, we pray that all of this will uh, come to pass quickly. And uh, Lord, things will settle back down. God, this is simply, uh, God, a, a matter of the enemy that would like to disrupt and to, uh, God, to destroy the work of God in that, uh, in that community. And so, Lord, we just pray that you would rebuke him. And uh, Lord, we just pray that, God, uh, the work uh, that you have undertaken there will continue on and and Lord, it will, it will be victorious. And so we just commit it all to you. Help us all now, Lord, to hear and uh, to be able to comprehend and then God to take action on the importance of your word in our lives. Help us all to desire, Lord, to really live the true Christian life. And uh, we'll just thank you for what you'll do and what you can do through our lives. And uh, Lord, we ask it all in Lord today and uh, just looking to you. Uh, someone here is lost. They'll trust you and be saved. We ask it in Jesus' name, and amen. Amen. I'm speaking this morning about living a true Christian life. And uh, we could take a long time just to try to scripturally define what that is, but this life, a true Christian life, it's a life that's only possible because of Jesus Christ, because it is His life. It is His life. And uh, for you to live a true Christian life, then you must have a real relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, a person who is not born again cannot live a Christian life. The world may call it that. The world may put them in that group or category. But a true Christian life is, is only possible because of Jesus Christ. It's only possible when we as an individual know Him personally and He lives in us. And when you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and, and He's living in you, then the true Christian life is when you begin to learn how to let Him live through you. He lives in you, but He then is allowed to live through you. That's when we begin to really live the Christian life. He begins to take the place in our heart and home that He deserves to have. 
And we can only know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and have a real relationship with Him because of the grace of God. It's just the grace of God that, 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 that is the, as the underlying reason why we can know the Lord. We can have a real relationship with Him. In our Building with the Bible Hour lesson this morning, the greatest gift you can give, that was the title of our lesson. But we began by saying that everything we are and have, God has given to us. And He gave it to us by His grace. Not because we deserve it. Not because uh, we can earn it. Not because we can merit it. But the grace of God is God's unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor toward us. And God has favored us today. Whoever you are, He's favored you with His grace because He knows you he, and He knows uh, our sin. And yet in spite of it all, He's given us His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's given us an opportunity to be born again and saved and to have a relationship with Him. All by the grace of God. God, uh, Romans 5, 8, But God commended His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, John 3, 16, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son and whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And every one of us here today are sinners. We have all sinned. And our sin separates us from God. It will send us to a Christless eternity unless we are saved from our sin. We must be saved. Sin, sin is anything we think, say, or do that's contrary to God's Word and will. When we talk about sin, we like to name them. You know, we like to say this is sin and that is sin and this is sin. But sin can be anything that we think, say, or do contrary to the will of God, contrary to the Word of God. But it can also be anything we fail to think, anything we fail to do or say that is according to the will of God, that is the will of God for your life, that God's Word instructs us to do. And so we find that in Acts 17, verse 30, God says that He now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. He commandeth all men everywhere to repent. That means that He has spoken to all the world, all seven billion people, all the lost, and He's given them a commandment. Repent and let me be your Savior. Repent and trust me and be given the gift of eternal life. That's the commandment of God. You know, I speak to people all the time who are critical of the church. They're critical of the Bible uh, for whatever reason they are. Uh, they, uh, they're struggling with this issue of sin. Uh, they look at professing believers and they see their life is no different than the world they live in. And so they compare uh, professing believers who aren't living true Christian lives if they are truly born again with themselves. And they feel like they measure up pretty good. So why do they need to be saved? Why do they need the church? Why do they need any of those things? And that's all very valid questions, isn't it? And, uh, and unfortunately, sometimes we as the people of God give them uh, ammunition against the very gospel that we know they need because we live such inconsistent Christian lives. Uh, but, but sometimes they, you know, they, they look at me and, and they'll say, well, you know, I, I, I'm a good neighbor, I'm a good dad, I'm a good husband, I'm good to my wife, I earn a living, I put clothes on the kids and food on the table, uh, you know, I, I try to keep the law and uh, the Ten Commandments. But the problem is, is God has commanded all men everywhere to repent. And a lost man, even if he's the best man among men where he works, or in his neighborhood, if he's never repented and trusted Christ, he has broken a law of God. He's broken a commandment. God said, I command you to repent. We're all sinners. We're all sinners. We've all sinned. And we know that, that God paid a debt for us that we could never pay ourselves. We know that He gave us His Son. His Son came and paid our sin debt. Romans 6.23 said, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God gave His Son for me, and He gave His Son for you. Christ gave His life for you and for me. And it cost God His Son, sinless and perfect, so that my sin might be paid for. Your sin debt might be paid for. Jesus Christ suffered and shed His blood and gave His life on the cross for me. He did it for you. 
This thing has to be personal. It has to be as personal as it can be, as anything can be to you. It has to be personal that it was your sin that caused him to suffer, to shed his blood and die. For you he died. For me he died. He did it for us. He rose from the dead for us. He lives today for us. He did it all for us. He's the only one that did it for us. He's the only one that could do it for us. And Paul, led of the Holy Spirit, pinned down these thoughts. He says in 2 Corinthians 5.14, For the love of Christ constraineth us. That word constraineth, it's the same word as the word grip. It's the same word meaning to grip or to get hold of. And Paul said, the love of Christ has gotten a hold of me. The love of Christ has gotten a grip on me. The love, not Paul's love toward Christ, but Christ's love toward Paul. When Paul said, knowing what I was without the Lord, knowing what I did, knowing who I am, and yet what he did for me has gotten such a grip on my life, it's gotten such a hold of my life, that my life will never be the same. And he goes on to say, the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge if one died for all, then we were all dead. Paul said, listen, I get it. We were all dead in our trespasses and sins. Dead without life, spiritually separated from God without hope forever. Paul said, that's where, that's where we were. That's where we were. And he said, and that he, Jesus Christ, died for all. That they which live should not not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto Him which died for them and rose again. Paul said, this thing's gotten a grip on me and gotten a hold on my life where I realize now, now my life is all about letting Him live through me. It's all about the true Christian life. That's the way it ought to be for every born again believer. It ought to be a pretty simple reasoning process that without Him, I'm eternally lost. I have nothing. But with Him, I have everything that means anything. And I wouldn't have it without Him. And my life now is not mine, it's His. And I want to live it because of what Jesus Christ has done for me. This, this should grip our hearts and lives. And it ought to get a hold of our hearts and lives. Because Christ died for me and lives I'll take my life that He's given me and live it for Him. I want to give Him His place in my heart. I want Him to have His place in my home. The place that He deserves. I want to give Him control. Control of uh, of my life. I, I want to choose His will every step of the way for my life. I want to yield my life to His Word. I, I would that He live through me. I want Him to live through me so that my life in this world can make a difference. I want to live a true Christian life. And this thing is not about whether I'm born again and saved or not. It's about whether or not being saved has gotten a hold of me. That the reality of it has gotten a grip on me. To, it brings me to that point where Paul said, my life is his. Lord, you live through me. This is the true Christian life. Every part of the true Christian life depends upon the word of God. Every part of it. The Word of God. And that's why we're going to begin with it today. Just as there are five things that need to be present in our daily lives as the people of God, if we want to live a true Christian life, beginning with the Word of God. Five things beginning with the Word of God. There are five things that, that, that we must do with the Word of God if we want to live a true Christian life. There are five things. I'm just going to give them to them. I'm not going to preach about them. I'm going to just give them to you. And there's a little card up here that gives some more explanation about the five. But these five things ought to be true about us and the Word of God every day. Number one, that we ought to read it every day. We ought to read the Word of God every day. But then we ought to study the Word of God. Studying is more than reading. Okay, Reading, studying... The third thing we ought to do with it is memorize it. We ought to hide it in our hearts. We ought to be able to bring up to our heart and mind 
scriptures and passages of scripture that we've learned and committed to heart and memory and ingrained them and planted them in our lives. And then the fourth thing we ought to do with the Word of God is meditate on it. That means, that means if we have read it and studied it and worked on memorizing it early in the morning, that throughout the day we ought to think about it. We ought to give time to our heart and mind for thoughts about God and His Word all throughout the day. It, it, it ought to, our thoughts of God and His Word ought not to leave us as soon as we close the book. We're to take them with us all throughout the day and we're to meditate on them and, and to bring them back in our hearts and, and we're to think about them and apply them to our life. And then you know what? All four of those are meaningless without the last one. We ought to obey the Word of God. Those five things, those five things should be a part of our lives in our relationship with the Word of God every single day. If we ever want to get a grip on the Christian life, it's all about the Word of God. It all depends on God's Word. It depends on those five things being true about the Word of God in our life. You know, Satan has attacked the Word of God since the beginning. If you go back to Genesis and you find Adam and Eve and the serpent Satan in the garden, do you know what he does? He attacks the Word of God. He attacks God's Word. Uh, that's how he approaches them. That's how he causes them to sin and to fall. It's through the Word of God. He knows the power that it has in your life. He knows the potential for it and he wants to keep you from it. And I'm not the only one. Many pe preachers and pastors do this, but but we were giving a Bible to someone the other day. I don't know. We give away a lot of Bibles. And, and Angie just brought it. And she said, here, put that thing you put in the front of that Bible in this Bible. So I took it and I just simply wrote, this book can keep you from the power of sin, Satan, in the world. Or sin, Satan, in the world will keep you from the power of this book. Read it every day. Uh, I put all five of those things in there. This is what you need to do with it. Because Satan knows the potential that it has in your life. He knows the power of the Word of God because it's the only thing that will put Him in His place. It's the only thing that has more power than He does. The power and authority of the Word of God. He's afraid. He doesn't care if you come to church every service. He doesn't care if you give an offering. He doesn't care uh, if you pass out a gospel track. Uh, but if you begin to read and read the Word till it begins to get in your life and then you begin to obey it and then you begin to live by it, then He's afraid because it's going to change you into a new creature that He doesn't have the power to defeat anymore. He fears the Word of God. Jesus Christ defeated Satan by the power of the Word of God. Get thee behind me, Satan. It is written... It is written, thus saith the Lord. And he rebuked him and defeated him with the power of the Word of God. The Word of God is not the product of man. It's, it's the supernatural resource of God. The Holy Spirit of God works in it. He works through it. He uses it in the life of the lost to bring them to a point of salvation. He uses it in the life of a child of God to defeat your enemies. He will give you clarity of life from the Word of God. He'll simplify your troubled, confused life so quickly if you'll just begin to get in the Word and obey it. Let it be the guide of your life. You'll become single-eyed, single-minded about what life's all about. The Word of God, He'll guide you. He'll direct you into making the right choices and decisions for yourself and your family. If you want to live the true Christian life, then you must hold the Word of God above all the opinions, experiences, and guidance of man. Okay, and I didn't exaggerate that. If you really want to live the true Christian life, You've got to hold this book above the opinions of anyone. A man, the world, whoever. The experiences that other people or you have had, this has to have the highest place. You have to default to the Word of God every time if you really want to live a true Christian life. In Acts chapter 2, you read about the first church, the first century church in Jerusalem, you read about the power that church had, how God used it. On the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people got saved, followed the Lord and believers' baptism. God added to the church every single day 
Every single day, there was another time when 5,000 got saved. The church was on fire for God. They were touching the world for Christ. They impacted their world with the gospel. Pastor, how did they do it? Acts 2.41, Then they that gladly received His word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. That's the very first thing the Bible says about this church. They kept in the book. They stayed with the Bible. They kept their feet solidly on the foundation of the Word of God. And God used that church in a mighty, powerful way. The early church impacted the world and changed it for the glory of God. The true church, like that church, the church today, is made up of truly born-again believers. Truly born-again believers. And our church, the church today, can have power and impact the world when we live true Christian lives. When we live true Christian lives. If we would like to see what they saw, be what they were, then we must become people and families with a grip on living the Christian life. Whatever it takes to get something done is what it will take to continue to get it done. Whatever it took to get it done then, reach a world for Christ, is what it's going to take today. It's going to take the same thing. Acts 17, 11, the Bible said, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily. They searched them daily. Psalm 63, verse 1, O God, Thou art my God, early will I seek Thee. My soul thirsteth for Thee. My flesh longeth for Thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is, to see Thy power and Thy glory. So as I have seen Thee in the sanctuary, because Thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise Thee. The psalmist, the psalmist here gives us an insight into the appetite we should have for God and His Word. And so many times we are finicky, aren't we? Finicky. I tell you what, being finicky is not, overall, it is not good for your physical condition. We, we, need, we need, well they say all four of the food groups, right? You know, you force your kids to eat peas and green beans and you try to, you want to. But we as adults are, are bad. We're bad about that. There's, we're so picky and finicky about what we will and will not eat. And we develop an appetite to where, uh, to where we, uh, we want the things that are not good and we neglect the things we need. And we can do this in a spiritual way as well. We can develop appetites for things. And maybe they're not bad things. But the problem is they take so much of our appetite away that we have none for what we really need. That's the Word of God. We need an appetite for God's Word. We need to hunger for it when we go a little while without it. We need to have a thirst for it, a thirst that can't be quenched till we spend some time in the Word of God, till God speaks to us through the Scriptures. Uh, we, we need to want to uh, change whatever needs to change so that we might put God's Word into our lives. I use Angie as an example of this, and a few years ago she took over our daycare and preschool when Miss Barbara retired after so many years of faithful service, and, and it was a life change because as the director, the, the preschool and daycare open at 6.30 in the morning, and sometimes there's parents on the parking lot at 6 or a little after 6, just depending on if they need to be at work a little earlier or whatever, and, and they're used to seeing the lights on and the door unlocked. And so Angie did that and, and uh, did it for a while. But after a while, she told me, she said, listen, I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have, I'm, I'm going to begin to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and I'm going to go ahead and get ready and I'm going to walk across the parking lot and I want to be over there in the office by 5.30 because she said, I need time with God and His Word because I lost that time and I and, and she said, I'm suffering from that. It's affecting me. It, it's affecting me as a wife, as a mother, as a grandmother, as a pastor's wife, as, as a daycare director, whatever. All aspects of our heart and life are impacted by that. And so she gets up at every morning at 5 o'clock to spend time with God. But it changes our lives. 
It changes our lives. 2 Corinthians 10 says in verse 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do you look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is in Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. The Bible speaks here about our thoughts and our mind and the ideals and philosophies of life because that's where the battle of life is at. It's, it's in how you think. It's in what you think. It's in the ideals of life you formed. It's in the values you have or don't have. It's in what you prioritize or don't prioritize. And Satan attacks you there and he wants you to conform it all to the world. But it's the Word of God that will transform your mind and renew it so that you can begin to think like the Lord Jesus Christ. To begin to have in your heart and life those thoughts and things, those ideals and philosophies and priorities that will transform your life and make it begin to look like the life of Christ. That's the true Christian life. I'm going to give you these things and I'm going to quit because my time is up. You just write them down. Uh, write these things down. These simple, powerful things that God's Word brings into your life that you can't find anywhere else. If you're not spending time in God's Word every day, these things are not a part of your life. Write down number one, faith for your life. Faith. Faith. You say, Pastor, I just, I'm struggling. I can't believe. I'm discouraged all the time. I am doubting. I've got so much you know, uh, turmoil, all these things. Uh, well, it's because it is by the Word of God that our faith is supplied and strengthened. Write down Romans 10, 17. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing cometh by the word of God. Faith, faith is the key to everything in your relationship. Hebrews eleven six. 6. Without it, you can't please him. It's the key to it all. But this is the only source. The word of God. It's the only source. Uh, and faith is simply hearing from God and then believing and obeying. That's faith. When you hear it, receive it and obey it. Faith. Faith for your life. Write down number two. Fellowship day by day with Jesus Christ. You can't walk with God. You can't be in love with the Lord and be near to Him and where you want to be and think you are apart from the Word of God. It's impossible. We have to have it every day, day by day. Remember what he said in, in 1 John 1.6. If we say that we fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Uh, I can't walk with the Lord if I'm not in the Word every day, and the Word's not in me. Why, Pastor? Well, Psalm 119, 105, Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet, and what? A light unto my path. I can't walk in the light and be in fellowship apart from the Word of God. So the Word of God every day brings faith. It brings fellowship. Write down number three. Through it, we find out what is real, what is genuine, what really matters. We find that out through the Word of God. Because the, the world, the devil and your flesh wants to sell you, wants to give you a false bill of goods. It wants to tell you that this is what you ought to live your life for. This is what's important. That's what you ought to make a priority. When in reality, that's not true. It's not real. It's not genuine. It's in the Word of God we find out what's real, what's genuine, what's sincere. Psalm 119, verse 100, I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I refrain my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. I've not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me how sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to the mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. We'll identify that which is not real, that which doesn't matter when we spend time in the Word of God. Then notice number four, we find the only resource to fight our foes. The only place we'll find victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil is by the Word of God. 
Psalm 107, verse 20, He sent His Word and He healed me and He delivered me from their destructions. Hosea 4, 6, My people are destroyed. Why? For a lack of knowledge. Because they turned from the Word of God. They were destroyed. Write down Luke 4, verse number 8. And you'll find there Jesus rebuked the devil through the power of His Word. John 8, 32, You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Then write down number five. If, if we want to walk and have a true Christian life, then it begins with the Word of God. We've got to get a grip on the Bible in our life and the importance of it. And it is only by the Bible we find faith for our life, that we find fellowship with the Lord, that we have and find out what is real and genuine and worth living for. It is only from the Word of God we find the resource to fight our foes. And number five, it is only through the Word of God that fruit Spiritual fruit will be produced through your life. Spiritual fruit. 2 Peter 3.18 But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If we'll be growing in the Lord through His Word, and through experiencing Him through His Word, we're going to produce spiritual fruit. We will produce spiritual fruit. 2 Peter 1 and write down verse 4 and following. And he speaks about the fruits that we can grow through the exceeding great and precious promises that have been given to us. And he talks about them. He lists them. Diligence and virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and godliness and brotherly kindness. All of these fruits will grow in your life when you get a grip on the Word of God in your life. That's the key. That's where it all begins. And if we want to live a true Christian life, then the Word of God is something we got to get a grip on. And I hope today you'll come up, you'll take some of the material and begin to implement these things into your life day by day and just put the Word of God where it needs to be in your heart and in your life. Let's pray together. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. In just a moment, we'll sing a verse of an invitation song. And, uh, and, and, and the invitation, of course, is the time for you to say yes to the Lord. There may be some of you today who just want to slip out of your seat today and say, you know what, Pastor? I've never trusted Christ as my personal Savior. If I died today, I do not know that I would go to heaven. But I would like for somebody to take the Bible and show me because I need clarity about this. I know this is what I need. If that's true of you, would you be willing to do that today? Somebody will meet you right here with the Bible. We'll take the Word of God and show you from the Scripture how Jesus Christ died for you, how He how He was buried and rose again and gives to you eternal life and forgiveness of sins. Anybody in the building today? I don't want to embarrass you. But maybe today you'd just be honest enough to slip up your hand and say, pray for me. I, I don't know about this. I'm not sure that I'm born again today. I'm not sure I've been saved. Anyone in the building? Anybody in the building say, Pastor, at the end of the service, would you and your wife maybe have time just to talk to me just a minute? Because we'll be glad to. We'll sit down and take all the time you need. I'm just not sure about being saved. And I know today that I need to be. Anyone in the building, you'd be willing to do that. Just slip your hand up let me see it. How about it today? Somebody in the building, you'd say, you'd say I, I want to live the true Christian life. I want my life to make a difference. I want Christ to be seen in me. It all begins with the Word of God. Would you get a grip on that? Maybe you need to slip out of your seat and come and just say, Lord, help me. I know I need to make some changes. I need to get up earlier. I need to stay up later. Whatever, Lord, I need to do. God, I want your Word to be in my heart and life where it ought to be. Maybe some people need to come and you just say, Lord, help me to get a grip on this thing. I know that I need, I need my faith strengthened. I want to be fruitful. I want my foes. I need to defeat them. I want to walk in fellowship with you, Lord. And that all becomes possible by the Word of God. So maybe you need to slip out of your seat and come. We'll pray together. We're going to stand. You respond uh, as the Lord leads you. Uh, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name now that you'll have your way every heart, every life. Help us to desire to live the true Christian life. Help us, Lord, to put your Word in our hearts and lives and get a grip on the importance of it. And God, change our lives uh, from the inside out by the Word of God. We ask you to meet every need 
In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together. We're playing hymn 282, hymn number 282 in the hymn book. And uh, we're going to sing a verse of that today. And uh, you just be obedient to the Lord today. Amen. Well, it's been good today. We're so glad you've been here, and we're thankful for uh, the message today and just being reminded about the importance of God's Word and, and uh, how vital it is to our Christian life. And I'm excited about uh, the rest of these messages this month as we, as Pastor uh, uh, preaches on these topics and just uh, thinking about uh, my own Christian life and uh, being sure that uh, I have a, a biblical uh, place in my life uh, on all these issues. And, of course, we want to, today, as we think about God's Word, uh, evaluate our own hearts and our own lives and uh, just be sure that uh, uh, we're doing things the way God has them and we're making uh, His Word uh, important in, in our lives. Yeah. And uh, so we're, we're so thankful that we've heard a good message today. Uh, don't forget, there's going to be a meeting just for just a couple of moments right after the service for our Hallelujah Festival. We want to encourage you to come and be a part of that meeting, and uh, we want you to be a help uh, to us at our Hallelujah Festival, especially if, you've, uh, if you're have if you newer to our church, not been a part of it before. We'd love for you to come and, and hear about it and uh, see how you can be a help to us as well. Uh, but it's been a great day, and uh, we're thankful for it. We'll be back tonight. And at 6 o'clock, choir is going to practice at 515, so I hope you'll be back tonight and be a part of our services again, uh, but it has been a great day. Well, we'll finish up, we'll have a word of prayer and be dismissed, but uh, we're just thankful for all the good things we've seen uh, today. Josh, will you pray for us, please? Amen.